just to give people some <clears throat> some background because we were kind of talking about it because you and I know about it but you say in the book here to clarify what the 160th is which is their their nickname their call sign is the night stalkers you say this the night stalkers were strictly a special operations outfit they had the best helicopters, the latest equipment, and an unlimited acquisition budget. They flew mostly at night using the latest technology, night vision devices, deep behind enemy lines, racing just above sand dunes, ocean waves, or jungle canopies to deliver special ops teams. Their missions were hostage rescues, snatching grabs of bad guys, even liberations of enemy equipment. Their customers were the elite of the elite, and strictly classified, meaning Navy SEALs, Army Rangers, or other special mission units. The existence of the Night Stalkers was officially denied, and their pilots had reputations as the James Bonds of the community. If a mission was regarded as impossible, the Night Stalkers would get it. And impossible had always been seductive to me. So that's a little bit of what 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 the night stalkers do what their mission is what their mission set is um so you end up obviously you you get there i'm going to fast forward through the book a little bit past some of those experiences <clears throat> and here we go on sunday december 17th i was packing up bathing suits and suntan lotion at my house in clarksville when my pager beeped and hummed at the time clay hopmacher had become my platoon leader but he was already more than that. Clay lived right above Lori and me in our two-family house, so we'd spent a lot of time together on and off base. He was my boss, but he was also my friend. I called into Fort Campbell, and he picked up on the first ring. Hopmacher, Durant, come on in. Roger that. I did not experience even a twinge of surprise, and I quickly switched my vacation suitcase for my combat duffel. Like many special operators, I was a news junkie watching and listening international flare-ups the way stockbrokers scan the ticks in the market. I knew that Manuel Noriega had already pushed the United States over the edge. On Saturday night, four young officers had been driving downtown in Panama City in the search of the perfect pizza. Outside Noriega's military headquarters, they had been stopped at a PDF roadblock. When members of the national, the police, began beating on the car with batons and hauling the hauling on the door handles, the young Americans concluded that they were about to disappear into one of Noriega's no- notorious dungeons forever. The driver hit the gas pedal as the Panamanians opened fire, killing Marine First Lieutenant Robert Paz. It hadn't ended there. An American Navy Lieutenant, Adam Curtis, had witnessed the shooting incident along with his wife. Both of them were dragged off for interrogations. While Mrs. Curtis was forced to assume the position against a prison cell wall and repeatedly threatened with rape, her husband was gagged, pistol whipped, and kicked in the groin right in front of her. This had gone on for four hours until the battered young couple was released to collapse into a public street. Noriega's message had been clearly received in Washington, come and get me, gringos. So that's what you're getting called in for. And... An interesting uh, side note here the officer the Navy officer that you talk about here Adam Curtis he was actually a seal and uh, I worked with him he was my task unit commander in a platoon and I think it was 1995 so five or six years after this happened he was my yeah he was my my task unit commander interesting it is a small world especially <laughs> in the soft world so Talk to us a little bit about Panama and what you did there. You know, I've, I've said multiple times lately as I've talked about, you know, my, my background and everyone knows me by Black Hawk Down, you know, one day in a 22-year career. And if I could pick what people knew me by, I'd actually probably pick Just Cause because when you think about what we trained for at the macro level, I mean, this was there was a hostage rescue on that mission. There was an airfield takedown on that mission. Uh, SEALs disabled airplanes that uh, Torrijos was going to, or Noriega was going to try to get out on. Uh, it, there was a largest airborne drop since Vietnam down at Rio Hato. Apaches got used for the first time. F-117 got used for the first time. I mean, it was, this was about as complicated an op as it get. And 
it was it all went down in like 36 hours i mean that moment you just described when i'm in my living room we're launching on h hour a day and a half later at one o'clock in the morning i still remember looking at donovan briley who i flew with on that mission he ends up donovan loses his life in some in somalia like is this real because you know <laughs> we, we'd been to uh to prime chance which was technically a, a combat op but no hostilities really when we were there when i was there where, uh, where was prime chance in the persian gulf the iranians were mining the uh, okay the, on the, the barges and yeah, whatnot so we lived on the barges and that's actually the first time that uh, night vision goggles were used in combat. They, one, of, one of the guys from the 160th, little bird guy, shot a bog hammer that was dropping mines into the sea and uh, used a flechette, actually. And one of the Iranians, after they captured him, is, is still got a flechette in his cheek. <laughs> so, obviously, Brown's on target. But, uh, you know, for Donovan and I, at 1 o'clock in the morning, flying on this mission with two Apaches to go down to Rio Hato to support – this airfield seizure, I mean, we're, we're sort of in disbelief, you know, because how many times you get spun up and spun down, you know, yeah. they, we're going to go, we're going to go, we're going to go, and then no, we're not going. And then that 2,000 pound bomb goes off at, at precisely 1 a.m. You know, we all bash our, 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 the other services, you know, they're nowhere near as good as us, but I will give the Air Force credit, that bomb hit precisely at 1 o'clock in the morning. And it was a pretty big splash. I mean, 2,000-pound bomb makes a heck of a flash in the middle of the night. So at that point, we, we realized, you know, this is real. But over the next, you know, several days, uh, you know, just amazing missions, just complete success, highly complex op, and uh, just that, that to me was the, the ultimate special operations mission. Just there's so many facets uh, all done well. Now we took some losses. You know, we 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 lost a couple pilots in a firefight in uh, in Cologne daytime. You know, that's always when we end up in trouble. We're in, we're in close, trying to take on people that you can't see. There's a lot of ways to shoot a helicopter down, and unfortunately, this little bird got shot down a couple of days later, and both pilots were killed. But but overall, just an incredible mission. And you know, ultimately, we do end up getting Manuel Noriega. And uh, he gets flown out actually by Cliff Walcott, who was flying with Donovan Briley in Somalia when he lost his life. So they were all one, you know, just one band of brothers, you know, and uh, being able to participate in those kind of ops. And I, I actually ended up supporting SEALs uh, on, uh, on the Cologne side. That was, that was my mission. We were, you know, trying to find Noriega. We called it the hunt for Elvis, you know, because it, there were Elvis sightings all over the place. You know, we get people would call it and say, yeah, he's over here. And we'd go, it wasn't quite that, you know, helter skelter. But there were several missions where we thought, okay, this is legit intel. He, he, you know, it's, it's legitimate enough to, to launch and we would take a place down. And he was never there. But finally, you know, as, as most people know, we found him hiding and uh, he eventually gave up and we flew him out. 